guys, I am here with Riley and Cody, two Lhasa Opso puppies. These belong to a pet parent who I used to groom her Lhasa Opso, as you can see here. Her dog was always kept in full coat. These puppies will be kept in full coat as well. So you'll be able to see them grow up on my channel and grow into full coat. Uh, right now, they're about five months old. So let's get busy. go ahead and get him straight into the tub get him all washed and blow dried and then trim around his feet and that's all he'll get today maybe a little snip under the tail right you ready okay <laughs> This is our cucumber melon face shampoo. It's tearless. I always do the face by hand when I use the shampoo system. Put the shampoo on dry and allow it to penetrate all the way down to the skin. Yes, yeah, you're being very good. I'm going to follow that with hand washing. Squeezing it all in. If I feel I need a little bit of full strength shampoo on those feet or under the tail, I'll just use our face shampoo and touch up those areas where it may be extra dirty. What a good baby you are. Me, you are. You're very sweet. The nice thing about the groomer's harness is you have these front V rings where you can anchor down the dog. Very helpful in the tub, especially with puppies. Because when he lunged like that, there's nothing on his throat, right? It's on his shoulders. Okay. 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 
now I'm going to put on the conditioner. going to use a good quality air wash, fill up each ear canal, rub it in at the base and allow the puppy to shake his head. They typically shake better once you unhook them. Shake, shake. Can you shake, shake? Can you shake, shake? He says, no, I'm mad. I'm a mad lassa upso. I'm a mad lassa upso, you give me that. Yeah. So the difference between a Lhasa Apso and a Shih Tzu is a Lhasa has a broader, more open nose, a little bit more length of muzzle, a little bit heavier bone. The coat is similar, but slightly different. I typically find most Lhasas have a bit thicker of a coat. Disinfect the tub. And go get him dry.
For puppy top knots, I like to use something to hold the hair down and train it to go in the direction that it should go. For this puppy, I'm using Chris Christensen vol Volumizing Gel. Just put some on a little popsicle stick here so there's no double dipping. Take some, put it on my finger, and then I'm gonna part the hair on top of his nose. I'm careful not to get this in the eyes, but I just want to, it's almost like a mustache grease kind of idea. We wanna train this hair in the way that it should go, which we want this to go back. We want this to go down. Now, lassas are not a ponytail breed in the shows, and a lot of people misconstrue the idea that you don't have to tie up the top knot, but you do. When you are maintaining the dog, you don't want all that hair in the face. When they're being shown, yes, you can let their hair down. You have to let their hair down. But for maintenance, we're going to keep it put up. And if you don't like your dog's hair put up, give them bangs. But don't just let all that fall on their face. That constant irritation of the hair on the eyes can actually cause problems like dry eye on dogs and then you've got a lifelong of problems. So you can see here I put the part on top of his nose pushed all this down. Then when training for a puppy top knot, basically when the hair is this length, you don't try to gather the whole area here, which I usually don't do anyway. I go middle of the eye to middle of the eye, not corner of the eye to corner of the eye. But when I'm training a puppy top knot like this, I'm gonna go inside corner of the eye to the inside corner of the eye. And I'm just gonna take up a small area You want your puppy top knots to be as comfortable as possible to get them used to this whole process. So we're just taking up the little middle part. Then we're gonna take the last little bit of this, put it right between. And then if it's poking too far forward, you can take the end from your comb, slide it under the band and just tilt one of those bands backwards. It's gonna hold that ponytail kind of back a little bit. And the rest of the hair is gonna stay out of the face because it's still pretty short. So that's the best way to train a puppy top knot, in my opinion. Now we're gonna trim the pads of his feet. He's being a very good boy. So you noticed I pushed him through and I'm not paying attention whatsoever to this attitude. Lassos have attitude, and they also bark a lot, and their job was sentry dogs on the walls of Tibet, and they barked and alerted in a guard dog fashion when strangers were approaching. Lassos can be very tough, they can be aggressive, they can and do command respect. And so I'm not coochie cooing him. I'm not pampering him through this. He's gonna need a lifetime of drumming and I need to earn his respect and I need to give him respect because of what he is as a breed.
a no-nonsense approach. Just like, yeah, 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 get over yourself. You're fine. <laughs> So I have worked on at least a thousand losses in my career, probably a lot more than that. And back in the day, here in this area, we used to have a very large Lhasa Apso kennel, produced over 150 champion dogs. So there were a lot of losses in the area. And, you know, the Lhasa is a breed that I've always gotten along with beautifully, but I do have a no-nonsense approach with them. I don't coochie-coo them. They don't respect coochie-coos. They don't respect coddling. They, they're an interesting breed of dog. And they do command respect, but they it's an interesting dynamic, you know? They they don't want somebody who's a pushover handling them. They don't want some kissy, kissy, poo-poo attitude. They're like a big guard dog in a little body. I know. They're not as popular as they used to be. We don't see as many of them these days. But it's a breed I really, really enjoy. Just have to understand them. And I've had losses come in over the years that I could work on, but their owners could not. Like they would bite their owners. And they come in for, with me and they're like, oh, okay, I respect you. <laughs> so while people might agree or disagree with my puppy training methods, they work. And that's one of the things I love about you being able to watch puppies grow up on my channel is, you know, I'm going to show you these puppies over and over again. And you're going to see how we bring it all together and you really do need to understand breed characteristics right and it takes experience of working with multiple dogs of the same breed to even understand how that applies to pet grooming or maintaining your dog at home <laughs> Good boy. I'm just gonna snip off a bit under the tail here. Good boy, you did very nice. Yes, you did. He was very nice boy, come here. Some puppy. All right, let's so run a comb over you and you can go take a nap while I work on your brother. You want to go take a nap? Sure, the comb slides through everywhere. He's got a beautiful coat, lovely texture. Isn't he cute? Yeah.
Look at that face. Isn't that cute? Oh, he's so cute. See the nice broad nostrils on the Lhasa? Much different from the Shih Tzu. Bigger, broader nose. So you also heard how vocal this one was while I was working on his brother. And like I said, these dogs are sentry dogs. They bark and alert if they consider something might be hazardous. So, you know, that was normal behavior for the Lhasa. Thank you. 
So the dog whining in the background is his brother watching him. Typically when you have litter mates like this, they're very, very bonded. Especially the boys.
I'm going to do the same thing around the eyes for this one. So for the most part, my theory on puppy training is getting straight to it. Some people like to take the really slow approach and some pup puppies need the really slow approach. But for the most part, these breeds that are going to need a lot of work, you know, they're gonna have to be brushed thoroughly, washed thoroughly, continually, you know, right off the bat. And there's no time to mess around. They need to learn how it's done and you know, they need to learn what's expected of them. And, you know, taking the super slow approach is not my approach. And if you doubt my methods, you can go watch the over 300 videos that I have out with my regular clients that I've trained up through the years. And you can see my clients are extremely extremely well behaved, not scared, not giving up, but extremely well behaved and wanting to behave. Right? They want to behave because you go puppies. Yeah. Because they've learned what's expected of them. So again, we're going inside corner of the eye to inside corner of the eye maybe just a hair past the inside corner of the eye. Just taking this small front piece, putting it up. Taking a tiny bit of our thick and thicker, putting it right on that piece in the front so it stays put up. Taking the end prong of our comb, holding that ponytail backwards, taking one piece of the band and flipping it up just a little to hold that hair backwards. And I've already done the pads of his feet, so we're just gonna tidy up around these feet. He had such long hair around his feet that I um, had to knock some of it off before I used the nail grinding tool. That's why I did it while he was wet. I normally don't do that, but. I did. A lot of times if I see it's that hairy, I'll do it before the bath. You're being very good bullies. You know, and if you go back and watch, like when I started to blow dry his face and he was having a little um, apprehension about it. And with an open hand, with a soft hand, I kept his head where I wanted it. And almost immediately, he gave into it, but not in a defeated way, not in a, you know, distraught way, just in a acknowledging, okay, this is what's expected of me here, why? And when I was blow drying him, he was being very vocal. I ignored it. I didn't pick him up and coddle him for that. Because when you pick them up and coddle them for that, you're telling them they're a good boy for making all that noise. They're a good boy for wigging out. <laughs> he sees himself. Um, so yeah, you, you, you ignore the unwanted behavior. The puppy is going to be fine. Uh, sometimes there are puppies who are overly traumatized and you learn to feel the dog that's under your hands. Of course you don't want to traumatize a dog, right? No. But if you can tell the puppy's just like, oh no, I don't like this, ah, you know, they'll be all right. They just have to get used to it. And as long as it's not hurting them, and they're not stressing out too much, you can go ahead and take them on through to the other side. This puppy has a beautiful top line. They're supposed to have a nice flat back. Beautiful. Into 
the tail. Get that. All right, our baby losses are all ready to go home and they had a good training lesson. They're tired, they're ready for a nap and they're happy, right? They're relaxed. And that's the important thing to understand. You can take puppies through to the other side. You can get your job done with a soft hand, with understanding, with understanding of breed characteristics and what is normal for them. Right? Yeah, it's normal for the babies. And just don't worry about it. They'll be okay as long as you're being nice to them. Right? Yeah, is it okay? Is it happy? Got waggy tails and kisses. Oh, I took a puppies. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss my next upload. And also consider joining my channel to help support the efforts that we put in. We're going to have some great videos coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Bye.